Hey there, Foxy Gamers! Welcome to Stardew Valley Min Max Full Year One. Now, don't worry for those of you who are interested in my regular series. I am. This is not replacing that. I'm still going to be doing our regular series. This is just in addition to. Uh, so the reason that I'm doing this version of a min-max run is because as I was trying to do the full year one before, it seemed that the abridged guide just wasn't really clicking for people, and everyone seemed to prefer to have the version with commentary instead. So I decided that I'm going to do it. So. My main purpose of doing the full year one is because my spring guide, I didn't realize just how many people there were that are playing console and mobile, and I didn't really feel like it was super fair to those people trying to play and follow my guide from console and mobile because it there's a lot of stuff that you're only going to be successful at with the PC version because it's just so much easier to water crops and there wasn't really a lot of room for error in that guide. So this guide is going to be a little bit more relaxed but still a lot of work so you know don't get too comfortable but my idea is that there's going to be more room for error and it'll be a little easier for people to follow along on the console or mobile. One thing to keep in mind is that you will probably very easily do better than I do in this playthrough because I don't know if you've tried this before, but playing and commentating at the same time are actually kind of difficult and I'm going to be much more prone to making mistakes than I have been in the past. Like when I was doing my min-max guides before, I was just playing, I was recording, but I wasn't commentating. So it was actually pretty easy to do. Uh, so th this time I'm probably gonna have a few mess ups, but that's okay. I'm not gonna restart because that'll just make it easier for you guys to do as well or better than me. The beginning of this starts out a lot like my spring guide did, where the, on day one we're going around and trying to get, um, you know, mixed seeds from everything, and we're hoping that we're gonna get a uh, an, an artifact from the little wormy guys. Oh, let's check over here, see if there's any forgeables. There is not. Okay. Um, but again, if you don't get an artifact, don't sweat it. We're taking this a little bit more chill. Probably still not going to do a lot of things like really socializing with people or trying to give them gifts because <clears throat> that takes away from us, uh, getting, getting the stuff done that we need to get done. Now, when winter rolls around, maybe potentially even fall, there will be time to then do quests and make friends. Obviously, we will have missed a few birthdays in spring and summer, but those people are just going to have to deal and not be our friends until year two. I am also going to try to complete the community center the traditional way. Granted, with a min-max run, it probably makes the most sense to spend all your money at, at Joja Mart because the um you're, you're gonna have a, a lot of extra cash than compared to what you would on a regular run but as joja mart is rather unpopular with most players i am not going to opt to do that if you do want to do that you will have enough money that you could get the greenhouse and the entire community center done a lot sooner than me but this playthrough is going to be focusing on making sure that we get all that we need for the community center the traditional way. I do want to check the trash cans on the first day, actually kind of for the first several days because we will potentially get some goodies in there, but so far we haven't really gotten much. 
I am going to play the entire playthrough. I'm going to show the entire playthrough, rather, of this series. Some of it may be sped up in places like the fishing, because that can be kind of boring, and there's not going to be much to really talk about with that. So there, there may be moments where the game just randomly speeds up, but I'm still going to try to have my commentary pretty spread out because see, people seem to like to have the commentary throughout the entire video. So if there are more things that I want to say while the video is sped up, then I will happily do a voiceover recording in those parts or just, you know, kind of spread out the commentary like this and speed up the video while I'm talking. So the path that I'm choosing for this beginning here is to try and get as many mixed seeds as I can before the end of day one. And I do want to get to Pierre's before he closes, so I need to make sure to keep my eye on that. So we're going to want to pick up as many parsnip seeds as we can from Pierre by the time we get there, which I think we're going to go straight there after collecting this little bit over here. So far, no success in finding an artifact, so we're not going to have that uh, special 250 gold for buying extra seeds, but like I said, it's not the end of the world. We're trying to be a little bit more chill with this. Even if I did find the artifact at this point, uh, I'm not sure I'd have time to go to Gunther and turn that in before we need to go into Pierre's. Oh gosh, I missed all these mixed seeds over here. Holy crap. What was I thinking, guys? See, I already messed up, so this will be easy for you to not mess up. Oh crap, okay, so we have... I'm going to eat this spring onion so we can pick up this dandelion here. All right. Yep, we're running out of time, so I need to head straight to Pierre's. Or else I'm going to be in big trouble. If we don't get parsnips on the first day, that is problematic because we are going to need as many parsnips as we can possibly get to make that extra cash. Actually, we're gonna probably be eating a lot of the parsnips, but you know, that way we can buy potatoes after they grow and go on from there. All right, we're still gonna make it. I didn't get as much done around the valley as I wanted to, but that's okay. All right, so what we wanna do here is make sure we get all of our necessary seeds for the community center by day 13 when we're gonna buy strawberries because that way we can have the 20 fertilizer and get extra strawberries by the end of the season so we need a parsnip bean cauliflower and potato now chances are we are likely going to get at least one cauliflower and one potato seed out of our mixed seeds because we're not done yet we're still going to go around and collect some more of these um, so I don't know that I want to buy a cauliflower just yet. It does take 12 days to produce a cauliflower. So if you do want to buy one, just buy the cauliflower because potatoes and beans are faster. And like, I don't want to take up the inventory space right now for the, the bean starter. We can come back to Pierre tomorrow, like on our way to the beach to see Willie. So for now, I'm just going to sell this gold dandelion. I guess I'm going to go ahead and buy a cauliflower because I just, I don't know. I only have seven mixed seeds. There is a possibility that I don't have a cauliflower in there and I'm not going to know until I plant, in which case it's going to be too late to come back to Pierre. Uh, so let's see here. I'm just going to go ahead and eat this spring onion. Nope, I want to eat it, Pierre, not sell it to you. Because we're probably going to need that energy to plant this stuff later. And we're going to buy all the parsnip seeds we can. Now let's see here. I could sell... I'm going to sell a couple of these. 
I'll keep two of each since we're on the way to making some spring seeds and I'll use that to buy the rest of those parsnips. All right, so that is going to be all we get from Pierre today. If we don't get potatoes in our, um, in our mixed seeds, then we can go back to him tomorrow and pick one of those up along with the green bean. So we'll go over here and see if we can get any more mixed seeds from this little pile behind Joe Mart. Yeah, if you got like at least 10 mixed seeds before you go into Pier, you're probably safe with not buying any more from him. But that is up to you. It depends on whether or not you want to take the risk. The risk being if you don't get any cauliflower from him, then you're not going to be able to get the fertilizer by day 13, which means you're basically losing out on uh, 20 strawberries. Let's see here. Ooh, I really want this dandelion because that will allow us to make a pack of spring seeds, but I also don't want to get rid of any of this other stuff, so I'm actually going to leave that there for now. It will still be there tomorrow, I believe. I could be wrong about that, uh, but we will pick it up then. So I'm going to go back over here and get the rest of these fiber over here and hope that we get some more mixed seeds. Don't forget you can also spend some time getting these weeds on your farm in hopes for more mixed seeds. It doesn't look like we're going to be fortunate enough today. I probably need to get on a roll with my planting, so I'm going to save that for later. And if we have more time at the end of the day, I will pick some of those up. Okay, so now it's just a matter of trying to plant as many things as I can before the end of the day. If you didn't buy a cauliflower from Pierre, then you definitely want to prioritize getting all of your mixed seeds planted and watered to see whether or not you're going to have a cauliflower. And as you can see from my video, I know it's a little difficult because it's dark right now, but the, the seed in the upper left corner of my plot there is a cauliflower seed. So as long as you get one that looks like that, that's all that matters, and then you can continue with planting your parsnips if you so choose. Since I went ahead and bought a cauliflower seed from Pierre, I am prioritizing planting my parsnips. And whatever I don't get planted, don't worry about it too much. We're just gonna plant in the morning. I did manage to get all of my seeds planted, so just spending the rest of the day going through and clearing out whatever weeds I can in hopes that we're going to find some more mixed seeds. If you don't, no big deal. Don't stress about it. Also, don't worry if you destroy some of the little saplings that are nearby because we're going to have plenty of trees, so it's not a big deal if you kill the little baby trees. I mean, they're going to think it's a big deal, but, you know, don't stress about it too much. It is perfectly okay to pass out on your farm the first night as you're not going to have any money to lose and you probably got a skill in foraging from going around the map and collecting stuff so you're going to start the, f a, the day with a full bar of energy um, so I recommend going around and just clearing as many weeds as you possibly can before the end of the day and then whatever mix seeds you find from doing that, you can just plant in the morning. And like a dummy, I actually forgot to plant the 15 parsnip seeds that were in our house. So that is what I'm going to do starting on day two. There were probably many of you that saw this happening and were screaming at me from the other side of your computer screen or your television. Um, so I apologize for that, but like I said, this guide is going to be a little bit more forgiving and the more I mess up, the better that means you're gonna do. So look at it that way. I guess I didn't realize that I didn't have those seeds because I still feel like we planted quite a few on the first day. 
Uh, but so I am just planting the rest of those parsnip seeds, watering everything, as well as the additional mixed seeds I found on my farm the night before. There are two things of importance that you need to remember on the morning of the second day is one, to be sure to check your mail so that you get the letter from Willie because if you go to the beach and you haven't checked your mail, Willie will not be there and so you'll have to run all the way back to do that and it's a huge waste of time. So make sure that is one of the first things you do in the morning. And the other thing is you want to bring 50 wood with you or rather you can just make a chest and bring the chest with you because we're going to use that to store the things that we get uh, fishing because now with iridium fish which you're not actually going to get on the first day but you will get them pretty quickly but with treasure chests and and that sort of thing you're going to run out of inventory space pretty quickly so you need to bring a chest with you in order to maximize your profits and you won't be able to like bring all that stuff back with you on the day that you get it but we'll be able to sell it on a following day one other thing you want to make sure to do at this point now that we have our first level of foraging is now you can pop up any of the seeds that you see in the ground so make sure that anytime you see an acorn seed nearby you want to pop that up and we're going to plant it along side our farm so on the far right side you can't plant any crops anyway and what we want to do with that is plant as many acorn seeds as possible every other down and that is going to grow into some oak trees for us to get a bunch of oak resin later for kegs because kegs are going to be the main thing that we're after in this playthrough so drop off everything that you don't need in your chest before going to the beach i am bringing some spring onions with me in case i need to eat some stuff before we get any fish that are of eating value you are also probably going to want to drop off a few things in your cell bin any sap that you have and any fiber except for save 60 fiber to turn into scarecrows later uh, but that will help us get enough money for the next day to go buy our green bean seed from pierre so i'm not worrying about it on the second day i realized that we're not actually going to have the money to buy the green bean without selling our forageables, which I don't really want to do at this point. But the green bean, if you buy it and plant it on day three, you will still have enough time for it to grow to maturity in order to turn it into the community center by day 13. Immediately after talking to Willie, I like to head up to the mountain lake. Um... I'm just ignoring the stuff on the beach for now because it's not of a huge amount of value. But by going to the mountain lake, there are easier fish to catch for your low level ability, as well as, oh, cookies, yeah. As well as like some higher quality stuff that you'll be able to catch earlier. And chubs, chubs are the best for eating at this point in the game because they give you the highest value of energy for their worth. Now it is up for debate what the best fishing spot on the mountain lake is. I like to go to the spot that I show you here because it allows me to, to have the fishing mini game in a spot that I like on my screen where if you go down to the area by the bridge, it's going to pop up in a weird spot and it just kind of throws me off. So I don't really like it very much. I did get lucky enough to get a cookie from the trash can. So that is the first thing that I ate and I'm saving the spring onions for another day or for later this day. So basically you just want to keep fishing at this spot for the remainder of the first day and 
get as many fish as you can, hopefully as many perfect catches as you can, because that gives you two and a half times the XP for every perfect fish that you catch. I'm actually really bad at fishing at this stage of the game, especially when I'm used to having level 10 fishing with fishing buffs in my other games. So if you're halfway decent at fishing, you're probably going to do better than me at this point. When eating the stuff that you're fishing up, you're going to want to prioritize eating the algae first and then your highest value chub because the, the better the chub, the like more energy per gold value you're going to get, if that makes sense. So it's like, it's better to sell the, the lesser chubs because they give you very little energy, um, but by comparison, it's a better gold value. Also, if you are lucky enough to encounter any sort of treasure chests on the first day, you always want to do everything you can to try and get those treasure treasure chests. It is better to aim for those and miss your perfect fish catch because you never know what you're going to get in the treasure chest. You could get really lucky and get something like an ancient doll or, or whatever those are, and those are worth like a thousand gold. Or you could get a diamond or a couple rubies or... If you're super lucky, maybe even a Neptune's Blade or a Trident, which will help you out greatly in the mines later. So make sure to always go for the treasure chests. I'm ignoring the horseradish over on the other side there because they're not worth very much. And the amount of time that it would take me to run all the way over to that side and back is just not worth the gold value of a horseradish. I would rather spend that time fishing and trying to get my skill up and some fish that would be worth more money than that horseradish. On day two, you definitely want to keep fishing all the way until 2 a.m. because you're for sure going to get at least one skill up in fishing and you still don't have any money at this point in time so you're not going to lose anything by passing out and that way you'll be able to maximize the amount of fish that you can get today just make sure that before you do pass out that you get all the most valuable things from your treasure chest that you want to take with you to the beach tomorrow to sell to willie You'll notice that I did go against my advice earlier and I ate the lesser chub than what I had. And the reason for that is because it was 1 a.m. already and I wasn't expecting there to be a lot more fish biting that night. So I didn't want to waste the value of my higher up chub. So that is the one time that you would opt to eat a chub of lesser value. I managed to get level 2 fishing on this day. It should be fairly easy for you to approach that unless you're brand new to fishing, which if that's the case, this probably isn't the guide for you because we're going to be doing lots of fishing. Uh, but maybe you're even better than me and you managed to get to level 3 fishing, which is great because you'll have an easier time on day 3 if that's the case. All right, well, that is going to do it for this episode of the guide. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far, and I hope that you're going to like to see the entirety of year one. It is going to take a little while, but hopefully not terribly long, as I'm not like, I, I kind of have my strategy down a little bit of what I want to do, and if any of you have some advice along the way, I am very much open to adapting and, you know, this is not set in stone. I don't have a final number for you, obviously, since we're kind of doing this as we go, but I predict that we're going to have somewhere around three to four million gold or three to four million value by the end of year one based off of my previous playthroughs. Perhaps even better if some ideas that I have will work better than before. Anyway, that is going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. And until next time, stay foxy.